Tulsidas Hindi, Tulasidasa Hindi pronunciation, T, Liz, I, D, S, also known as Goswami Tulsidas, Goswami Tulasidasa 1532-1623 was a Hindu Vaishnava saint and poet, often called reformer and philosopher from Ramanandi Sampradaya, in the lineage of Jagadguru Ramanandacharya renowned for his devotion to the Lord Sri Rama. Tulsidas wrote several popular works in Sanskrit and Awadhi. He is best known as the author of the epic Ramcharitmanas, a retelling of the Sanskrit Ramayana based on Rama's life in the vernacular Awadhi dialect of Hindi. The Bhavishya Purana also predicts the incarnation of Sri Valmiki as Goswami Tulsidas in the Kaliyuga, in its verse and also explained in detail by H. G. Shriman Chandra Govind Das of the Iskan Temple. Tulsidas spent most of his life in the city of Varanasi. The Tulsi Ghat on the Ganges River in Varanasi is named after him. He founded the Sankatmachan temple dedicated to Hanumanji in Varanasi, believed to stand at the place where he had the site of Hanumanji. Tulsidas started the Ramlila plays, a folk theater adaption of the Ramayana. He has been acclaimed as one of the greatest poets in Hindi, Indian, and world literature. The impact of Tulsidas and his works on the art, culture, and society in India is widespread and is seen to date in vernacular language. Ramlila plays, Hindustani classical music, popular music, and television series. Topic: <laughs> Transliteration and etymology. The Sanskrit name of Tulsidas can be transliterated in two ways. Using the original Sanskrit, the name is written as Tulasidasa. Using the Hunterian transliteration system, it is written as Tulsidas or Tulsidas reflecting the vernacular pronunciation since the written Indian languages maintain the vestigial letters that are no longer pronounced. The lost vowels are an aspect of the schwa deletion in Indo-Aryan languages and can vary between regions. The name is a compound of two Sanskrit words, Tulasi, which is an Indian variety of the basil plant considered auspicious by Vaishnavas devotees of God Vishnu and his avatars like Rama, and Dasa, which means slave or servant and by extension, devotee. Tulsidas, which means a servant of the plant Tulsi. Topic. Sources Tulsidas himself has given only a few facts and hints about events of his life in various works. Till late 19th century, the two widely known ancient sources on Tulsidas' life were the Bhaktamal composed by Nabatas between 1583 and 1639, and a commentary on Bhaktamal titled Bhaktirasbodini composed by Priyadas in 1712. Nabatas was a contemporary of Tulsidas and wrote a six-line stanza on Tulsidas describing him as an incarnation of Valmiki. Priyada's work was composed around a hundred years after the death of Tulsidas and had eleven additional stanzas, describing seven miracles or spiritual experiences from the life of Tulsidas. During the 1920s, two more ancient biographies of Tulsidas were published based on old manuscripts, the Mula Gosain Charit composed by Veni Madhav Das in 1630 and the Gosain Charit composed by Dasanidas also known as around 1770. Veni Madhav Das was a disciple and contemporary of Tulsidas and his work gave a new date for Tulsidas' birth. The work by Bhavanidas presented more narratives in greater detail as compared to the work by Priyadas. In the 1950s a fifth ancient account was published based on an old manuscript, the Gautam Chandrika composed by Krishnadatta Misra of Varanasi in 1624. Krishnadatta Misra's father was a close companion of Tulsidas. The accounts published later are not considered authentic by some modern scholars, whereas some other scholars have been unwilling to dismiss them. Together, these five works form a set of traditional biographies on which modern biographies of Tulsidas are based. Topic. Incarnation of Valmiki He is believed by many to be a reincarnation of Valmiki. In the Hindu scripture Bhavishyatar Purana, the god Shiva tells his wife Parvati how Valmiki, who got a boon from Hanuman to sing the glory of Rama in vernacular language, will incarnate in future in the Kali Yuga the present and last yuga or epic within a cycle of four yugas. Nabatas writes in his Bhaktamal literally, the garland of Bhakt or devotee that Tulsidas was the reincarnation of Valmiki in the Kali Yuga. The Ramanandi sect believes that it was Valmiki himself who incarnated as Tulsidas in the Kali Yuga. According to a traditional account, Hanuman went to Valmiki numerous times to hear him sing the Ramayana, but Valmiki turned down the request saying that Hanuman being a monkey was unworthy of hearing the epic. 
After the victory of Rama over Ravana, Hanuman went to the Himalayas to continue his worship of Rama. There he scripted a play version of the Ramayana called Mahanataka or Hanuman Nataka engraved on the Himalayan rocks using his nails. When Valmiki saw the play written by Hanuman, he anticipated that the beauty of the Mahanataka would eclipse his own Ramayana. Hanuman was saddened at Valmiki's state of mind and, being a true bhakta without any desire for glory, Hanuman cast all the rocks into the ocean, some parts of which are believed to be available today as Hanuman Nataka. After this, Valmiki was instructed by Hanuman to take birth as Tulsidas and compose the Ramayana in the vernacular. Early life Birth Tulsidas was born on Saptami, the seventh day of Shukla Paksha, the bright half of the lunar Hindu calendar month Shravana July -August. Although as many as seven places are mentioned as his birthplace, most scholars identify the place with Sukhar Kshetra Soran, district Kasganj in Uttar Pradesh, a village on the banks of the river Ganga. In 2012 Sukharket Soran was declared officially by the government of Uttar Pradesh as the birthplace of Tulsi Das. His parents were Hulsi and Atmaram Dubi. Most sources identify him as a Saryapurin Brahmin of the Parashar Gatra lineage, although some sources claim he was a Kanyakaba or Sanadya Brahmin, there is difference of opinion among biographers regarding the year of birth of Tulsidas. Many sources rely on Veni Madhav Das' account in the Mula Gosain Karita, which gives the year of Tulsidas' birth as Vikrami Samvat 1554 1497 CE. These sources include Shivlal Padak, popular editions of Ramcharitmanas Gita Press, Naval Kishore Press and Venkateshvar Press, Edwin Greaves, Hanuman Prasad Padar, Ramanan Sarasvati, Ayodhyanath Sharma, Ramchandra Shukla, Narayandas, and Rambhadracharya. A second group of biographers led by San Tulsi Sahib of Hathras and Sir George Grierson give the year as Vikram 1589 these biographers include Ramkrishna Gopal Bhandarkar, Ramgulam Dwivedi, James Lochtefeld, Swami Sivananda and others. A third small group of authors which includes H. H. Wilson, Garst de Tass and Krishnadatta Mishra gives the year as Vikram 1600 CE. The year 1497 appears in many current-day biographies in India and in popular culture. Biographers who disagree with this year argue that it makes the lifespan of Tulsidas equal 126 years, which in their opinion is unlikely if not impossible. In contrast, Ramchandra Shukla says that an age of 126 is not impossible for a Mahatma great soul like Tulsidas. The government of India and provincial governments celebrated the 500th birth anniversary of Tulsidas in the year 2011 CE, according to the year of Tulsidas' birth in popular culture. Topic. Childhood Legend goes that Tulsidas was born after staying in the womb for twelve months, he had all thirty-two teeth in his mouth at birth, his health and looks were like that of a five-year-old boy, and he did not cry at the time of his birth but uttered Rama instead. He was therefore named Rambola literally, he who uttered Rama, as Tulsidas himself states in Vinaya Patrika. As per the Mula Gosain Karita, he was born under the Abhuktamula constellation, which according to Jyotisha Hindu astrology causes immediate danger to the life of the father. Due to the inauspicious events at the time of his birth, he was abandoned by his parents on the fourth night, sent away with Chunia some sources call her Munia, a female servant of Hulsi. In his works Kavitavali and Vinayapatrika, Tulsidas attests to his parents abandoning him after birth due to an inauspicious astrological configuration. Chunia took the child to her village of Harapur and looked after him for five and a half years after which she died. Rambola was left to fend for himself as an impoverished orphan, and wandered from door to door begging for alms. It is believed that the goddess Parvati assumed the form of a Brahmin woman and fed Rambola every day. Topic. Initiation from guru and learning At the age of five years, Rambola was adopted by Narharitas, a Vaishnava ascetic of Ramananda's monastic order who is believed to be the fourth disciple of Ramananda, or alternately, the disciple of Anantacharya. Rambola was given the Virakta Diksha Vairagi initiation with the new name of Tulsidas. Tulsidas narrates the dialogue that took place during the first meeting with his guru in a passage in the Vinayapatrika. When he was seven years old, his Upanayana, sacred thread ceremony, 
was performed by Narharitas on the fifth day of the bright half of the month of Magha January to February at Ayodhya, a pilgrimage site related to Rama. Tulsidas started his learning at Ayodhya. After some time, Narharitas took him to a particular Varaha Kshetra Soran a holy place with temple dedicated to Varaha, the Bor Avatara Vishnu, where he first narrated the Ramayana to Tulsidas. Tulsidas mentions this in the Ramcharitmanas. Most authors identify the Varaha Kshetra referred to by Tulsidas with the Sukhar Kshetra as the Soran Varaha Kshetra in modern-day Kaskanj. Tulsidas further mentions in the Ramcharitmanas that his guru repeatedly narrated the Ramayana to him, which led him to understand it somewhat. Tulsidas later came to the sacred city of Varanasi and studied Sanskrit grammar, four Vedas, six Vedangas, Jayotisha, and the six schools of Hindu philosophy over a period of 15 to 16 years from Guru Shesha Sanatana, who was based at the Pankaj. Ganga Ghat in Varanasi. Shesha Sanatana was a friend of Narharitas and a renowned scholar on literature and philosophy. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Marriage and renunciation. There are two contrasting views regarding the marital status of Tulsidas. According to the Mula Gosain Karita and some other works, Tulsidas was married to Ratnavali on the 13th day of the bright half of the Jayeshta month May to June in Vikram 1583 Ratnavali was the daughter of Dinbandu Padak, a Brahmin of the Bharadwaja Ghatra, who belonged to Mahewa village of Kashambi district. They had a son named Tarak who died as a toddler. Once when Tulsidas had gone to a Hanuman temple, Ratnavali went to her father's home with her brother. When Tulsidas came to know this, he swam across the Yamuna River in the night to meet his wife. Ratnavali chided Tulsidas for this, and remarked that if Tulsidas was even half as devoted to God as he was to her body of flesh and blood, he would have been redeemed. Tulsidas left her instantly and left for the holy city of Prayag. Here, he renounced the Grihastha householder's life stage and became a sadhu Hindu ascetic. .Some authors consider the marriage episode of Tulsidas to be a later interpolation and maintain that he was a bachelor. They include Rambhadracharya, who interprets two verses in the Vinayapatrika and Hanuman Bahuka to mean that Tulsidas never married and was a sadhu from childhood. <laughs> later life Travels After renunciation, Tulsidas spent most of his time at Varanasi, Prayag, Ayodhya, and Chitrakuta but visited many other nearby and far-off places. He travelled across India to many places, studying different people, meeting saints and sadhus and meditating. The Mula Gosain Karita gives an account of his travels to the four pilgrimages of Hindus Badrinath, Dwarka, Puri and Rameshwaram and the Himalayas. He visited the Manasarovar Lake in current-day Tibet, where tradition holds he had darshan sight of Kakabushundi, the crow who is one of the four narrators in the Ramcharitmanas. <laughs> <laughs> darshan of Hanuman Tulsidas hints at several places in his works, that he had met face to face with Hanuman and Rama. The detailed account of his meetings with Hanuman and Rama are given in the Bhaktiras Bodhini of Priyadas. According to Priyada's account, Tulsidas used to visit the woods outside Varanasi for his morning ablutions with a water pot. On his return to the city, he used to offer the remaining water to a certain tree. This quenched the thirst of a Prada, a type of ghost believed to be ever thirsty for water, who appeared to Tulsidas and offered him a boon. Tulsidas said he wished to see Rama with his eyes, to which the Prada responded that it was beyond him. However, the Prada said that he could guide Tulsidas to Hanuman, who could grant the boon Tulsidas asked for. The Prada told Tulsidas that Hanuman comes every day disguised in the mean attire of a leper to listen to his katha, he is the first to arrive and last to leave. That evening Tulsidas noted that the first listener to arrive at his discourse was an old leper, who sat at the end of the gathering. After the katha was over, Tulsidas quietly followed the leper to the woods. In the woods, at the spot where the Sankat Mochan temple stands today, Tulsidas firmly fell at the leper's feet, shouting, I know who you are, and you cannot escape me. At first the leper feigned ignorance but Tulsidas did not relent. Then the leper revealed his original form of Hanuman and blessed Tulsidas. When granted a boon, Tulsidas told Hanuman he wanted to see Rama face to face. 
Hanuman told him to go to Chitrakuta where he would see Rama with his own eyes. At the beginning of the Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas bows down to a particular Prata and asks for his grace. Ramcharitmanas, Doha 1.7. According to Rambhadracharya, this is the same Prata which led Tulsidas to Hanuman. Topic: <laughs> Darshan of Rama. As per Priyadas' account, Tulsidas followed the instruction of Hanumana and started living in an ashram at Ramgat in Chitrakuta. One day Tulsidas went to perform the parikrama of the Kamadgiri mountain. He saw two princes, one dark and the other fair, dressed in green robes pass by mounted on horsebacks. Tulsidas was enraptured at the sight, however he could not recognize them and took his eyes off them. Later Hanuman asked Tulsidas if he saw Rama and his brother Lakshmana on horses. Tulsidas was disappointed and repentful. Hanuman assured Tulsidas that he would have the sight of Rama once again the next morning. Tulsidas recalls this incident in a song of the Gitavali and laments how his eyes turned his own enemies by staying fixed to the ground and how everything happened in a trice. On the next morning, Wednesday, the new moon day of Magha, Vikram 1607 1551 CE or 1620 1564 CE as per some sources, Rama again appeared to Tulsidas, this time as a child. Tulsidas was making sandalwood paste when a child came and asked for a sandalwood tilaka a religious mark on the forehead. This time Hanuman gave a hint to Tulsidas and he had a full view of Rama. Tulsidas was so charmed that he forgot about the sandalwood. Rama took the sandalwood paste and put a tilaka himself on his forehead and Tulsidas' forehead before disappearing. In a verse in the Vinayapatrika, Tulsidas alludes to a certain miracle at Chitrakuta and thanks Rama for what he did for him at Chitrakuta. Some biographers conclude that the deed of Rama at Chitrakuta referred to by Tulsidas as the Darshan of Rama. Topic: <laughs> Darshan of Yajnavakya and Bharadvaja. In Vikram 1628 1572 CE, Tulsidas left Chitrakuta for Prayag where he stayed during the Magha Mela the annual fair in January. Six days after the Mela ended, he had the darshan of the sages Yajnavakya and Bharadvaja under a banyan tree. In one of the four dialogues in the Ramcharitmanas, Yajnavakya is the speaker and Bharadvaja the listener. Tulsidas describes the meeting between Yajnavakya and Bharadvaja after a Magha Mela festival in the Ramcharitmanas. It is this meeting where Yajnavakya narrates the Ramcharitmanas to Bharadvaja. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Attributed miracles. Most stories about Tulsidas tend to be apocryphal and have been carried forward by word of mouth. None of them were related by Tulsi himself, thus making it difficult to separate fact from lore and fiction. In Priyadas' biography, Tulsidas is attributed with the power of working miracles. In one such miracle, he is believed to have brought back a dead Brahmin to life. While the Brahmin was being taken for cremation, his widow bowed down to Tulsidas on the way who addressed her as Sabhagyavati a woman whose husband is alive. The widow told Tulsidas her husband had just died, so his words could not be true. Tulsidas said that the word has passed his lips and so he would restore the dead man to life. He asked everybody present to close their eyes and uttered the name of Lord Rama, on doing which the dead Brahmin was raised back to life. Tulsidas was acclaimed in his lifetime to be a reincarnation of Valmiki, the composer of the original Ramayana in Sanskrit. He is also considered to be the composer of the Hanuman Chalisa, a popular devotional hymn dedicated to Hanuman, the monkey god and divine devotee of Lord Rama. In another miracle described by Priyadas, the emperor of Delhi, Akbar summoned Tulsidas on hearing of his bringing back a dead man to life. Tulsidas declined to go as he was too engrossed in creating his verses but he was later forcibly brought before the Akbar and was asked to perform a miracle, which Tulsidas declined by saying, It's a lie, all I know is Rama. The emperor imprisoned Tulsidas at Fatehpur Sikri. We will see this Rama. Tulsidas refused to bow to Akbar and created a verse in praise of Hanuman and chanted it Hanuman Chalisa for forty days and suddenly an army of monkeys descended upon the town and wreaked havoc in all corners of Fatehpur Sikri, entering each home and the emperor's harem, scratching people and throwing bricks from ramparts. An old Hafiz told the emperor that this was the miracle of the imprisoned fakir. The emperor fell at Tulsidas' feet, released him and apologized. Tulsidas stopped the menace of monkeys and asked the emperor to abandon the place. 
The emperor agreed and moved back to Delhi. Ever since Akbar became a close friend of Tulsidas and he also ordered a firman that followers of Lord Rama, Lord Hanuman and other Hindus, should not be harassed in his kingdom, Priyadas narrates a miracle of Tulsidas at Vrindavan, when he visited a temple of Krishna. When he began bowing down to the idol of Krishna, the Mahant of the temple named Parshuram decided to test Tulsidas. He told Tulsidas that he who bows down to any deity except their Ishta Devata cherished form of divinity is a fool, as Tulsidas Ishta Devata was Rama. In response, Tulsidas recited the following extemporaneously composed couplet when Tulsidas recited this couplet, the idol of Krishna holding the flute and stick in hands changed to the idol of Rama holding the bow and arrow in hands. Some authors have expressed doubts on the couplet being composed by Tulsidas. Topic literary life Tulsidas started composing poetry in Sanskrit in Varanasi on the Prahlada Ghat. Tradition holds that all the verses that he composed during the day, would get lost in the night. This happened daily for eight days. On the eighth night, Shiva, whose famous Kashi Visvanath temple is located in Varanasi, is believed to have ordered Tulsidas in a dream to compose poetry in the vernacular instead of Sanskrit. Tulsidas woke up and saw both Shiva and Parvati who blessed him. Shiva ordered Tulsidas to go to Ayodhya and compose poetry in Awadhi. Shiva also predicted that Tulsidas' poetry would fructify like the Sama Veda. In the Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas hints at having the darshan of Shiva and Parvati in both dream and awakened state. Tulsidas is also credited with having composed a number of wise sayings and dohas containing lessons for life. A popular one among them is, Avada hai harasaya nahim nainana nahim sanoa tulasi vaham na j kehi konkana bares mera awit hai harshay nahin, nainan nahin sana. Tulsi tahan na j, jahe kanchan bars mag. Lit. A place where people are not happy or welcoming when you come, where their eyes have no affection for you, don't go there, even if a mountain of gold is showered. Topic composition of Ramcharitmanas In the year Vikram 1631, 1575 CE, Tulsidas started composing the Ramcharitmanas in Ayodhya on Tuesday, Ramnavami day, ninth day of the bright half of the Kshetra month, which is the birthday of Rama. Tulsidas himself attests this date in the Ramcharitmanas. He composed the epic over two years, seven months and twenty-six days, and completed the work in Vikram 1633 1577 CE on the Vivaha Panchami day, fifth day of the bright half of the Margashirsha month, which commemorates the wedding of Rama and his wife Sita. Tulsidas came to Varanasi and recited the Ramcharitmanas to Shiva and Parvati at the Kashi Visvanath temple. A popular legend goes that the Brahmins of Varanasi, who were critical of Tulsidas for having rendered the Sanskrit Ramayana in the Awadhi, decided to test the worth of the work. A manuscript of the Ramcharitmanas was kept at the bottom of pile of Sanskrit scriptures in the Sanctum Sanctorum of the Vishvanath temple in the night, and the doors of the Sanctum Sanctorum were locked. In the morning when the doors were opened, the Ramcharitmanas was found at the top of the pile. The words Satam Shivam Sundaram Sanskrit, Satam Saivam Sundaram literally truth, auspiciousness, beauty were inscribed on the manuscript with the signature of Shiva. The words were also heard by the people present. Per traditional accounts, some Brahmins of Varanasi were still not satisfied, and sent two thieves to steal the manuscript. The thieves tried to break into the ashram of Tulsidas, but were confronted by two guards with bows and arrows, of dark and fair complexion. The thieves had a change of heart and came to Tulsidas in the morning to ask who the two guards were. Believing that the two guards could be none other than Rama and Lakshmana, Tulsidas was aggrieved to know that they were guarding his home at night. He sent the manuscript of Ramkaratmanas to his friend Rai Tadar Mal, the finance minister of Akbar, and donated all his money. The thieves were reformed and became devotees of Rama. Topic. Last compositions. Around Vikram 1664 1607 CE, Tulsidas was afflicted by acute pain all over his body, especially in his arms. He then composed the Hanuman Bahak, where he describes his bodily pain and suffering in several stanzas. He was relieved of his pain after this composition. Later he was also afflicted by barded boils Hindi, baratora furinkles caused by pulling out of the hair, which may have been the cause of his death. The Vinaypatrika is considered as the last compositions of Tulsidas, believed to be written when Kali Yuga started troubling him. In this work of 279 stanzas, he beseeches Rama to give him bhakti, devotion, and to accept his petition. Tulsidas attests in the last stanza of Vinaypatrika that Rama himself signed the manuscript of the work. 
The 45th stanza of the Vinaypatrika is sung as the evening arti by many Hindus. Topic: <laughs> Death. Tulsidas left his body at the Asi Ghat on the bank of the river Ganga in the Shravan July -August month of the year Vikram 1680 1623 CE. Like the year of his birth, traditional accounts and biographers do not agree on the exact date of his death. Different sources give the date as the third day of the bright half, seventh day of the bright half, or the third day of the dark half. Works <laughs> <laughs> Twelve works are widely considered by biographers to be written by Tulsidas, six major works and six minor works. Based on the language of the works, they have been classified into two groups as follows Awadi works, Ramcharitmanas, Ramlala Nahakyu, Barve Ramayan, Parvati Mangal, Janaki Mangal and Ramagya Prashna. Braha works, Krishna Gitavali, Gitavali, Sahitya Ratna, Dohavali, Vairagya Sandapani and Vinaya Patrika. Besides these twelve works, four more works are popularly believed to be composed by Tulsidas which include Hanuman Chalisa, Hanuman Ashtak, Hanuman Bahak and Tulsi Satsai. Ramcharitmanas <laughs> <laughs> Ramacharitamanas, Ramacharitamanasa 1574–1576, the Manasa lake brimming over with the exploits of Lord Rama, is an Awadhi rendering of the Ramayana narrative. It is the longest and earliest work of Tulsidas, and draws from various sources including the Ramayana of Valmiki, the Adhyatma Ramayana, the Prasanaragava and Hanuman Nataka. The work consists of around 12,800 lines divided into 1073 stanzas, which are groups of shopes separated by dohas or sorthas. It is divided into seven books cans like the Ramayana of Valmiki, and is around one-third of the size of Valmiki's Ramayana. The work is composed in 18 meters which include 10 Sanskrit meters Anushtip, Shardulvakritit, Vasantatilaka, Vamshashta, Upajati, Pramanika, Malini, Shragdhara, Rathodata and Buyangaprayada and 8 Prakrit meters Soratha, Doha, Chaupai, Harijatika, Tribangi, Chaupaya, Trotaka and Tamara. It is popularly referred to as Tulsikrit Ramayana, literally the Ramayana composed by Tulsidas. The work has been acclaimed as the living sum of Indian culture. The tallest tree in the magic garden of medieval Indian poesy. The greatest book of all devotional literature. The Bible of Northern India. And the best and most trustworthy guide to the popular living faith of its people. Several manuscripts of the Ramcharitmanas are claimed to have been written down by Tulsidas himself. Grierson wrote in the late 19th century, two copies of the epic were said to have existed in the poet's own handwriting. One manuscript was kept at Rajapur, of which only the Ayodhyakhand is left now, which bears marks of water. A legend goes that the manuscript was stolen and thrown into Yamuna River when the thief was being pursued, and only the second book of the epic could be rescued. Grierson wrote that the other copy was at Maliabad in Lucknow district, of which only one leaf was missing. Another manuscript of the Ayodhyakanda claimed to be in the poet's own hand exists at Soran in Etta district, one of the places claimed to be Tulsita's birthplace. One manuscript of Balakanda, dated Samvat 1661, 19 years before the poet's death, claimed to be corrected by Tulsita's, is at Ayodhya. Some other ancient manuscripts are found in Varanasi, including one in possession of the Maharaja of Benares that was written in Vikram 1704-1647, 24 years after the death of Tulsidas. <laughs> other major works The five major works of Tulsidas apart from Ramcharitmanas include Dohavali, Dohavali 1581, literally collection of Dohas, is a work consisting of 573 miscellaneous Doha and Sortha verses mainly in Braha with some verses in Awadi. The verses are aphorisms on topics related to tact, political wisdom, righteousness and the purpose of life. 85 Dohas from this work are also found in the Ramcharitmanas, 35 in Ramagya Prashna, 2 in Vairagya Sandapani, and some in Rama Satsai. Another work of 700 Dohas attributed to Tulsidas 
Sahitya Ratna or Ratna Ramayan (1608–1614), literally collection of Kavitas, is a braha rendering of the Ramayana, composed entirely in meters of the Kavita family: Kavita, Savaya, Ganakshari, and Chapaya. It consists of 325 verses, including 183 verses in the Uttarkhand. Like the Ramcharitmanas, it is divided into seven cans or books, and many episodes in this work are different from the Ramcharitmanas. Gitavali, Gitavali literally collection of songs, is a braha rendering of the Ramayana in songs. All the verses are set to ragas of Hindustani classical music and are suitable for singing. It consists of 328 songs divided into seven cans or books. Many episodes of the Ramayana are elaborated while many others are abridged. Krishna Gitavali or Krishnavali, Kresna Gitavali 1607, literally collection of songs to Krishna, is a collection of 61 songs in honor of Krishna in Braha. There are 32 songs devoted to the childhood sports and Rasa Lila of Krishna, 27 songs form the dialogue between Krishna and Uddhava, and two songs describe the episode of disrobing of Draupadi. Vinaya Patrika, Vinaya Patrika literally Petition of Humility, is a Braha work consisting of 279 stanzas or hymns. The stanzas form a petition in the court of Rama asking for bhakti. It is considered to be the second best work of Tulsidas after the Ramcharitmanas, and is regarded as important from the viewpoints of philosophy, erudition, and eulogistic and poetic style of Tulsidas. The first 43 hymns are addressed to various deities and Rama's courtiers and attendants, and remaining are addressed to Rama. <inaudible> Minor works Minor works of Tulsidas include Barve Ramayana, Baravai Ramayana 1612, literally the Ramayana in Barve meter, is an abridged rendering of the Ramayana in Awadi. The works consists of 69 verses composed in the Barve meter, and is divided into seven cans or books. The work is based on a psychological framework. Parvati Mangal, Parvati Mangala literally the marriage of Parvati, is an Awadi work of 164 verses describing the penance of Parvati and the marriage of Parvati and Shiva. It consists of 148 verses in the Sohar meter and 16 verses in the Harajitika meter. Janaki Mangal, Janaki Mangala literally the marriage of Sita, is an Awadi work of 216 verses describing the episode of marriage of Sita and Rama from the Ramayana. The work includes 192 verses in the Hamsagati meter and 24 verses in the Harajadika meters. The narrative differs from the Ramcharitmanas at several places. Ramalala Nahakyu, Ramalala Nahachu literally the Nahakyu ceremony of the child Rama, is an Awadi work of 20 verses composed in the Sohar meter. The Nahakyu ceremony involves cutting the nails of the feet before the Hindu samskaras rituals of Chudakarana, Upanayana, Vedaramba, Samavartana or Vivaha. In the work, events take place in the city of Ayodhya, so it is considered to describe the Nahakyu before Upanayana, Vedaramba and Samavartana. Ramagya Prashna, Ramajnya Prasna literally querying the will of Rama, is an Awadi work related to both Ramayana and Jyotisha astrology. It consists of seven cans or books, each of which is divided into seven saptakas or septets of seven dohas each. Thus it contains 343 dohas in all. The work narrates the Ramayana non-sequentially, and gives a method to look up the shakuna omen or portent for astrological predictions. Vairagya Sandapini, Vairagya Sandapani 1612, literally kindling of detachment, is a philosophical work of 60 verses in Braha which describe the state of jnana realization and vairagya dispassion, the nature and greatness of saints, and moral conduct. It consists of 46 dohas, 2 sorathas and 12 chaupai meters. <laughs> Popularly attributed works The following four works are popularly attributed to Tulsidas Hanuman Chalisa, Hanumana Kalisa literally, 40 verses to Hanuman, is an Awadi work of 40 shopes and 2 dohas in obeisance to Hanuman. Popular belief holds the work to be authored by Tulsidas, and it contains his signature, though some authors do not think the work was written by him. It is one of the most read short religious texts in northern India, and is recited by millions of Hindus on Tuesdays and Saturdays. It is believed to have been uttered by Tulsidas in a state of samadhi at the Kumbh Mela in Haridwar. 
Sankatmachan Hanumanashtak, Sankatamokana Hanumanastaka literally eight verses for Hanuman, the remover of afflictions, is an awadhi work of eight verses in the Matagajendra meter, devoted to Hanuman. It is believed to have been composed by Tulsidas on the occasion of the founding of the Sankatmachan temple in Varanasi. The work is usually published along with Hanuman Chalisa. Hanuman Bahuka, Hanumana Bahuka literally the arm of Hanuman, is a Braha work of 44 verses believed to have been composed by Tulsidas when he suffered acute pain in his arms at an advanced age. Tulsidas describes the pain in his arms and also prays to Hanuman for freedom from the suffering. The work has 2, 1, 5 and 36 verses respectively in the Chapaya, Jolna, Savaya and Ganakshari meter. Tulsi Satsai, Tulasi Satasai literally 700 verses by Tulsidas, is a work in both Awadhi and Braha and contains 747 Dohas divided in seven Sargas or Cantos. The verses are same as those in Dohavali and Ramagya Prashna but the order is different. <laughs> Doctrine The philosophy and principles of Tulsidas are found across his works, and are especially outlined in the dialogue between Kakbushundi and Garuda in the Uttar Kand of the Ramcharitmanas. Tulsidas' doctrine has been described as an assimilation and reconciliation of the diverse tenets and cultures of Hinduism. At the beginning of the Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas says that his work is in accordance with various scriptures, the Puranas, Vedas, Upavedas, Tantra and Smriti. Ram Chandra Shukla in his critical work Hindi Sahitya Ka Itihas elaborates on Tulsidas Lakmangal as the doctrine for social upliftment which made this great poet immortal and comparable to any other world literature. <laughs> Nirguna and Saguna Brahman As per Tulsidas, the Nirguna Brahman quality less impersonal absolute and Saguna Brahman personal God with qualities are one and the same. Both saguna qualified brahman and aguna or nirguna unqualified brahman are akath unspeakable a god unfathomable anadi without beginning in existence since eternity and anupa without parallel aguna saguna dui brahma sarupa akatha agada anadi anupa it is the devotion bhakti of the devotee that forces the nirguna brahman which is quality less formless invisible and unborn to become saguna brahman with qualities Tulsidas gives the example of water, snow, and hail to explain this. The substance is the same in all three, but the same formless water solidifies to become hail or a mountain of snow, both of which have a form. Tulsidas also gives the simile of a lake. The Nirguna Brahman is like the lake with just water, while the Saguna Brahman is a lake resplendent with blooming lotuses. In the Uttar Kand of Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas describes in detail a debate between Kakbushundi and Lamasa about whether God is Nirguna as argued by Lamasa adhering to monism or Saguna as argued by Kakbushundi adhering to dualism. Kakbushundi repeatedly refutes all the arguments of Lamasa, to the point when Lamasa becomes angry and curses Kakbushundi to be a crow. Lamasa repents later when Kakbushundi happily accepts the curse but refuses to give up the bhakti of Rama, the Saguna Brahman. Though Tulsidas holds both aspects of God to be equal, he favors the qualified Saguna aspect and the devotees of the highest category in the Ramcharitmanas repeatedly ask for the qualified Saguna aspect of Rama to dwell in their mind. Some authors contend from a few couplets in Ramcharitmanas and Vinay Patrika that Tulsidas has vigorously contradicted the denial of Avatar by Kabir. In several of his works, Kabir had said that the actual Rama is not the son of Dasharatha. In the Balkand of Ramcharitmanas, Shiva tells Parvati, those who say that the Rama whom the Vedas sing of and whom the sages contemplate on is different from the Rama of Ragu's race are possessed by the devil of delusion and do not know the difference between truth and falsehood. However, such illusions are based on interpretations of the text and do not hold much water when considered in the context of Ramcharitmanas. Tulsidas, in none of his works, has ever mentioned Kabir. The name of Rama At the beginning of the Ramcharitmanas, there is a section devoted to the veneration of the name of Rama. As per Tulsidas, repeating the name of Rama is the only means to attain God in the Kali age where the means suited for other ages like meditation, karma, and puja are ineffective. He says in Kavitavali that his own redemption is because of the power, glory and majesty of the name of Rama. In a couplet in the Gitavali, Tulsidas says that wishing for liberation without refuge in the name of Rama is like wishing to climb to the sky by holding on to the falling rain. 
In his view, the name of Rama is greater than both Nirguna and Saguna aspects of God, it controls both of them and is illuminates both like a bilingual interpreter. In a verse in the Dohavali, Tulsidas says that the Nirguna Brahman resides in his heart, the Saguna Brahman resides in his eyes and the name of Rama resides on his tongue, as if a radiant gemstone is kept between the lower and upper halves of a golden casket. He holds that Rama is superior to all other names of God, and argues that Ra and Ma being are the only two consonants that are written above all other consonants in the conjunct form in Sanskrit because they are the two sounds in the word Rama. Topic. Rama as Brahman At several places in Tulsita's works, Rama is seen to be the higher than Vishnu and not as an avatar of Vishnu, which is the general portrayal of Rama. In the episode of the delusion of Sati in Ramcharitmanas, Sati sees many as Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu serving Rama and bowing at his feet. When Manu and Shatarupa perform penance, they crave to see that Supreme Lord, from a part of whose being emanate a number of Shivas, Brahmas, and Vishnus. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva come to them many times tempting them with a boon, but Manu and Shatarupa do not stop their penance. They are finally satisfied only by the appearance of Rama, on whose left side is Sita, from a part of whom are born, countless Lakshmis, Umas, Parvatis, and Brahmanis Sarasvatis. In the episode of marriage of Sita and Rama in Balkan, the trio of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva is present. Brahma is astounded as he finds nowhere anything that is his own handiwork, while Vishnu is enchanted with Lakmi on seeing Rama. In the Sundarkand, Hanuman tells Ravana that Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva can create, preserve and destroy by the might of Rama. In the Lankakand, Tulsidas presents the universe as the cosmic form of Rama, in which Shiva is the consciousness, Brahma is the reason and Vishnu is his intelligence. As per Tulsidas, Rama is not only an avatar, but also the source of avatars. Krishna is also an avatar of Rama. Thus, Tulsidas clearly considers Rama as supreme Brahman and not an avatar of Vishnu. In the opinion of Urvashi Sorati, the Rama of Tulsidas is an amalgamation of Vishnu who takes avatars, Vishnu in the abode of K. Shira Sagara, Brahman, and the para manifestation of the Pancharatra. Makfi concludes that Tulsidas makes a double claim i.e. Rama is an incarnation of both Vishnu and Brahman. In the words of Lutgendorf, Tulsita's Rama is at once, Valmiki's exemplary prince, the cosmic Vishnu of Puranas, and the transcendent Brahman of the Advaitins. <laughs> Vedanta, world and Maya In the Sundarkand of Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas says that Rama is knowable by Vedanta, as per Tulsidas, Rama is the efficient and material cause nimitta and upadana of the world, which is real since Rama is real. In several verses of the Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas says that the animate and inanimate world is a manifestation of Rama, and the universe is the cosmic form of Rama. Authors interpret these verses to mean that the world is real according to Tulsidas, in keeping with the Vishishtadvaita philosophy of Ramanuja. However, at some places in the Ramcharitmanas and Kavitavali, Tulsidas compares the world to a night or a dream and says it is mythia false or unreal. Some commentators interpret these verses to mean that in Tulsidas' opinion the world is unreal as per the Vivardavada doctrine of Adi Shankara, while some others interpret them to mean that the world is transient yet real as per the Sakyadivada doctrine of Ramananda. Uday Banu Singh concludes that in Tulsita's view, the world is essentially the form of Rama and appears to be different from Rama due to Maya. Its visible form is transient, which is what Tulsita's means by mythia. In the Vinayapatrika, Tulsita's says that the world in itself is neither true satya, nor false asatya, nor both true and false together satya satya. one who casts aside all these three illusions, knows oneself. This has been interpreted to mean that as per Tulsita's, the entire world is a lila of Rama. At the beginning of the Ramcharitmanas, Tulsidas performs Samasti Vandana obeisance to all beings in which he bows down to the world also, saying it is pervaded by or born out of Sita and Rama. As per some verses in Ramcharitmanas and Vinaypatrika, when a jiva living being knows the self, Maya and Rama, it sees the world as being pervaded by Rama. In the Balkand episode of the marriage of the princes of Ayodhya with the princesses of Mathila, Tulsidas presents a metaphor in which the four brides are compared with the four states of consciousness, the waking state Jagrat, sleep with dreams Swapna, dreamless sleep Sushupti, and the fourth self-conscious state Turiya. 
The four grooms are compared with the presiding divinity of the four states, Vishva, Taijasa, Prajna and Brahman. Tulsidas says as the four states of consciousness with their presiding divinities reside in the mind of a jiva, so the four brides with their grooms are resplendent in the same pavilion. Tulsidas identifies Maya with Sita, the inseparable energy of Rama which takes avatar along with Rama. In his view, Maya is of two types, Vidya and Avidya. Vidya Maya is the cause of creation and the liberation of jiva. Avidya Maya is the cause of illusion and bondage of the jiva. The entire world is under the control of Maya. Maya is essentially the same but the two divisions are made for cognitive purposes. This view of Tulsidas is in accordance with Vaishnava teachers of Vedanta. <laughs> <laughs> Views on other Hindu deities As per Tulsidas, there is no incompatibility between devotion to Rama and attachment to Shiva. Tulsidas equates the Guru as an incarnation of Shiva, and a considerable part of the Balkan of Ramcharitmanas is devoted to the narrative of Shiva including the abandonment of Sati, the penance of Parvati, the burning of Kamadeva and the marriage of Parvati and Shiva. In addition, Tulsidas venerates the whole Hindu pantheon. The Ramcharitmanas begins with reverence of Ganesh, Sarasvati, Parvati, Shiva, the Guru, Valmiki and Hanuman. At the beginning of the Vinayapatrika, he bows to Ganesh, Surya, Shiva, Devi, Ganga, Yamuna, Varanasi and Chitrakut, asking them for devotion towards Rama. Bhakti The practical end of all his writings is to inculcate bhakti addressed to Rama as the greatest means of salvation and emancipation from the chain of births and deaths, a salvation which is as free and open to men of the lowest caste as to Brahmins. Topic. Critical reception From his time, Tulsidas has been acclaimed by Indian and Western scholars alike for his poetry and his impact on the Hindu society. Tulsidas mentions in his work Kavitavali that he was considered a great sage in the world. Madhusudana Sarasvati, one of the most acclaimed philosophers of the Advaita Vedanta tradition based in Varanasi and the composer of Advaitasiddhi, was a contemporary of Tulsidas. On reading the Ramcharitmanas, he was astonished and composed the following Sanskrit verse in praise of the epic and the composer. Sir, a devotee of Krishna and a contemporary of Tulsidas, called Tulsidas as San Shiramani the highest jewel among holy men in an eight-line verse extolling Ramcharitmanas and Tulsidas. Abdur Rahim Kankana, famous Muslim poet who was one of the Navaratnas nine gems in the court of the Mughal emperor Akbar, was a personal friend of Tulsidas. Rahim composed the following couplet describing the Ramcharitmanas of Tulsidas. The historian Vincent Smith, the author of a biography of Tulsidas' contemporary Akbar, called Tulsidas the greatest man of his age in India and greater than even Akbar himself. The Indologist and linguist Sir George Grierson called Tulsidas the greatest leader of the people after the Buddha and the greatest of Indian authors of modern times and the epic Ramcharitmanas worthy of the greatest poet of any age. The work Ramcharitmanas has been called the Bible of North India by both 19th-century Indologists including Ralph Griffith, who translated the four Vedas and Valmiki's Ramayana into English, and modern writers. Mahatma Gandhi held Tulsidas in high esteem and regarded the Ramcharitmanas as the greatest book in all devotional literature. The Hindi poet Suryakant Tripathi Nirala called Tulsidas the most fragrant branch of flowers in the garden of the world's poetry, blossoming in the creeper of Hindi." Nirala considered Tulsidas to be a greater poet than Rabindranath Tagore, and in the same league as Kalidasa, Vyasa, Valmiki, Homer, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and William Shakespeare. Hindi literature Hazari Prasad Dwivedi wrote that Tulsidas established a "...sovereign rule on the kingdom of Dharma in northern India," which was comparable to the impact of Buddha. Edmore J. Babineau, author of the book Love and God and Social Duty in Ramakaritmanasa, says that if Tulsidas was born in Europe or the Americas, he would be considered a greater personality than William Shakespeare. In the words of the archaeologist F. R. Alchin, who translated Vinaypatrika and Kavitavali into English, For people of a large part of North India Tulsidas claims reverence comparable to that accorded to Luther as translator of the Bible into the native German. 
Alchin also mentions that the work Ramcharitmanas has been compared to not only the Ramayana of Valmiki, but the Vedas themselves, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, and the Bible. Ernest Wood in his work An Englishman Defends Mother India considered the Ramcharitmanas to be superior to the best books of the Latin and Greek languages. Tulsidas is also referred to as Bhaktasiramani, meaning the highest jewel among devotees, specifically about his poetry. Tulsidas has been called the emperor of the metaphor and one who excels in similes by several critics. The Hindi poet Ayodhya Singh Upadhyay said of Tulsidas, The Hindi poet Mahadevi Verma said commenting on Tulsidas that in the turbulent Middle Ages, India got light from Tulsidas. She further went on to say that the Indian society as it exists today is an edifice built by Tulsidas, and the Rama as we know today is the Rama of Tulsidas. See also Hanuman Chalisa Ramcharitmanas Sri Ramachandra Kripalu Thumakshalat Ram Chandra Bhakti movement Topic Notes Topic References Topic External Links Works by or about Tulsidas at Internet Archive The Ramcharitmanas of Tulasidas, published by Gita Press Tulsidas Biography